Can you give me some kisses? <laughs> Booey, can you give me some kisses? She was just really kissing me, but slightly prematurely. Boo, are you going to give me some kisses? Give me some kisses. No, that's it for the day. I had them. That was it. Oh, no, you are going to give me some kisses. You are. Just on my hand. OK, that's fine. Good morning, everybody. In fluffy land out there. I hope everybody's well and welcome to our next live tutorial. Betty's come to say hi. And actually, she's just come for this little treat <laughs> because we were very, 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 very bad dog owners this morning. We forgot to give her any breakfast before we came out. <laughs> it was all a bit stressful, but um, she's had quite a few treats. Right, Boo, you've got to leave now. She knows the score. She knows the score, don't you, girl? Right. Hello and welcome <laughs> to my next live tutorial, which is making felt selfies so i know that's a bit of a strange title what it actually means is like felting pictures really um but this is our felt this is our felt selfie kit okay so this is what i'm going to be doing um and then yesterday i did a little poll on instagram to say what would you like who would you like me to do a selfie of i mean obviously a selfie would be of me but you know we don't need to see me in felt. Got me on the screen. Um, and it was a tie between two people from my poll. And it wasn't a poll. I got people to suggest who I should felt. Two people suggested Boris Johnson. Um, and I was like, oh, man, no. Firstly, let's not get political. And secondly, I do not want to stir his mug uh, <clears throat> in order to do this. <laughs> so like, he was out of the question. Um, who else did someone suggest? I can't remember the name of them now. Some, um, some watercolour artist with a big afro. He would have been quite cool actually, but I just thought it was a bit random. No one had heard of him. Uh, well, maybe you have heard of him, but I can't remember his name. And then it was an absolute tie between Chris, he's looking surprised now, and Betty Boo. Okay. But, oh no, he's looking for his microphone. Are you about to say something? No. <laughs> but obviously Chris is an enigma. Um, enigma lover. <laughs> loves that. So uh, I'm, not going to do, I'm not going to do Chris. I'm going to do Bessie Boo actually, which is very exciting. So I've got some pictures of her. We're wearing a pink hat, of course. Who's dogged up and wear a pink hat? It's kind of, frankly, a bit weird. But you know, what I would suggest you do is work from a photograph now you can print that out or you could you know just have it on your phone or you can you know work from real life have someone sitting opposite you if you're going to do a friend partner relative whatever so it doesn't really matter you just need to be able to look at a, the picture you know of somebody and work from that i'm going to tip out the contents of this kit right and i'm going to show you what you get in it although i have used some of the bits already so it's looking a bit sparse um oh that as well. Okay, so let's just put that to one side because it's all shining. It stresses Chris out, it catches the light. Right, so you get a whole load of wool tops. If anyone's watching this and doesn't know what wool tops are, they are unspun wool. Okay. Whoa. Oh, hang on. What are wool tops? Unspun wool. So it's this. It's what you would use for spinning if you're spinning a yarn. So this is how you would spin a yarn from unspun wool. Okay or it's what we use for felting. <laughs> he knows fully well what these are. I think he's just being, he's just in one of those moods, folks. Uh-oh. Anyway, so you get lots and lots of wool tops in lots of different colours. You get colours to do the backgrounds behind the person's head. Then you get the colours to do the skin, the hair and the facial features. And obviously you can add things in like scarves, hats, glasses, whatever. Um, and then you get a whole load of white to do a backing. I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. And then you get a bamboo mat and a piece of netting. And these are used to actually make the felt with. And you get a very lovely set of instructions in case you're not watching this or you don't know what to do. OK, so all you need to add is some imagination. Um, and I have run this workshop in here actually with loads of people. And uh, sometimes they do themselves and they're looking at pictures of themselves in their phone or well, you could use a mirror actually couldn't you um, and sometimes they uh, have brought a picture in, a picture in of a relative 
whatever. So I, as I mentioned last week, I don't know if you saw my last tutorial, but there's the Queen. I mean, it's not a hugely accurate representation of Her Majesty, but you know. And then this guy, I mean, I don't even know who this is. I just make these up. But he looks like a vicar. He looked like a vicar, so I turned him into a bald vicar. Uh, and then I just like doing sort of like bright, colourful, silly ones. So I've done a few. Um, they're actually on the front of the packet, just to use as examples. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to set up my workspace and I'm going to work directly onto the little bamboo mat. So I suggest you just work onto a waterproof surface. And I'm just going to hopefully, according to all my uh, pieces of tape all over the table, put my... Um, bamboo mat in the right place okay so before we get going with the actual face and the hair and all of that we need to sort of lay out a backing and a background now a backing just sort of holds the whole thing together really um it's doesn't really matter what color it is and in this instance you've been given white to do it with okay um, and that's going to go down first and then what we have on top of the backing is the background and as you can see um, I've just used this sort of greeny colour behind the Queen. What I would recommend doing with the background is using a colour that's not going to be in the body of the person that you're creating, okay? So if you're doing somebody with bright red hair then try not to have that colour uh, behind them obviously because they won't stand out. So try and use something from the opposite end of the spectrum in the colour spectrum something that they're really going to stand out from when you're deciding which colours to use. And there's plenty of choice in the packet. So working directly onto this little mat here, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the white and we're just going to lay out this backing which holds it all together. Now, if you've never used wool tops before, this is hugely important, folks. If you're only going to listen to one thing, listen to this. <laughs> it's how you pull the wool apart and how you lay it down onto the mat. OK, you don't have to work on the mat. It's just because you've got the mat in the kit packet. It does provide you with some sort of friction and um, helps it all, all felt together. So I'm working on that. It also gives you the optimum size to make it and it's going to shrink. So it's good to start this size and then you shrink it down. OK, so we're going to work directly onto this bamboo mat. Now, pulling the wool tops apart, hold the wool about six to eight inches down. I'm just going to pull a piece off so you can see. Now, when I hold it like this, can you see how long the strands are? They're really long with merino. This is merino wool tops. It's very, very soft, very fine, felts very quickly, but it has very long handles. So you can see that the, the fibres all go down to here. So consequently, if I'm holding it a lot higher up, I'm holding on to them and I can't pull them off. All right. So you want to hold it far enough down so that you can release the wool tops, okay, easily. It shouldn't be a hard thing to do. So it should be a case of, I'm just going to take my glasses off because I can't see what I'm doing down here now. Um, it should be a case of being able to release them really easily like this and then lay them down. Okay. So yeah, I was just going to say, Chris, let's go to the overhead and I'm just going to show you what I'm doing here. So it's this action, okay, I'm holding them far enough down to just release the ends off really easily, okay. If you grab too much of the wool, again, you can't pull it off, all right. This is what not to do. Can you see the difference between oh that and this, all right. So if I now take this, I could split this up into probably another one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. Okay. So really make sure that you're pulling the wool apart correctly. If for no other reason other than it will make it so much easier to felt it together when you get to that bit with the soap in the water and the rubbing it all together. Okay. If you've pulled the wool off correctly and you've laid it down correctly, that part will become easier. If you've laid it all down too chunkily, is that a word? Chunkily. Uh, if you've laid it down too thickly, it will become a nightmare and the fibres will take a lot longer to bond together and you'll end up with something that's a lot more sort of rough and ready um, and a little bit lumpy and bumpy. So really worth just taking a bit of time to get to grips with this. And when people first come here to do this in my studio, it does take them a few goes and often I have to show them a few times. So, um, you know, don't beat yourself up about it if you can't do it straight away. But do use the bulk of this piece 
Uh, there's enough in the pack to make two of these pictures. I should have said that at the beginning. So I'm just using the piece for one. OK, I've already done another one, which I'm going to show you in a little while. Um, so I'm just going to lay down and I'm, I'm laying these fibers all going in the same direction. I don't know if you've noticed that, but they're all going top to bottom. All right. And the reason for that is because I'm now going to lay the background pictures over the top going in the other direction. OK, so let me just finish off by filling in a few holes. People always say to me as well, how do I know when I've laid down enough? OK, well, you don't want a massive, great big mound of it in front of you, but you need to be sure that you can no longer really see what's underneath it. OK, so um, I would keep going until you can no longer see the, the, the bamboo mat underneath. OK, and you're fairly confident that you've got it all covered. All right. So I think that's fine for my demonstration. I've got a little bit left here, but I'm going to stop. OK, so with the piece that I'm doing, I'm going to do Betty wearing her pink hat. So she's black, she's white, she's wearing an orange scarf and she's got um, she's got a pink hat on. OK, now in the actual picture, <laughs> Chris is sniggering. Whose dog hasn't got a pink hat? Sorry, it's normal, isn't it? Obviously, she only wears it in the winter, but you know. You ridicule that pure, <laughs> poor dog. Actually, there was, I don't know if you can see, but I have got a matching pink hat in, in the pit. Anyway. Um, oh, she loves it. She told me she loves it. So um, the, the, what I'm trying to say is the background behind this is very busy and I'm going to kind of ignore it because it's the background here and it's all sorts going on. So all I've decided to do is keep the background blue and green, basically, um, which are sort of the opposite end to the pink and, and the ready pink and the orange. OK, so the colours I'm going to use are this colour here, which is a, what we call sage green. OK, and then I'm going to use this turquoisey blue as well. Uh, what else did I use? Um, and I think I used a bit of this green as well. So I've done one already and I'm going to try and recreate it for you. OK, so when we're doing the background now, all right, it's going to go in the opposite direction to the backing. OK, I know all these complicated terms. So what I'm going to start to do now is I'm going to pull the wall off in exactly the same way. So this green piece, I'm holding it six to eight inches down. I've just grabbed the very ends and I'm just releasing them gently like that. OK, and then I'm just going to overlap them as I lay them down. So this is my backing, uh, sorry, background now. OK, so I'm covering up the white. I always managed to get one of my hairs involved. Uh, no, where's it gone? Oh, maybe I imagined that. OK, uh, so I'm covering up the white and I'm just overlapping it as I'm laying it down like this. OK, and what I'm going to do, I've decided, is I'm going to do green at the top and then I'm going to fade it into the turquoisey blue colour at the bottom. All right, so I'm going to stop that there. Then I'm going to get the turquoisey blue colour. Um, and then I'm just going to start laying that at the bottom here like this. And again, you can see I've got a few or well, maybe you can't see actually. I've got a few little white bits poking out at the bottom, but don't worry about that. If you uh, by the time you've finished all this and you've felted it all together, you'll end up with a nice um, frilly edge and you won't notice any bits that were sort of hanging out a little bit. OK, so I'm just going to go up to here. This is a funny piece of wool I've got here, so it's not very easy to use. All right, let's do that. If you've got any questions as I'm going along, feel free to type them on the screen. And my lovely husband and very able assistant, who's very keen to read out questions, will read them out and ask them. Oh. He's already raised his hand as I speak. Go ahead. Lisa Van Helsing. Hello, Lisa. On her, her Facebook. Facebook. How do you get your edges to stay so straight? Well, we I used this kit a few weeks ago and loved it, but our sides are really wonky. Oh, OK. Well, that really that's something I can show you once it's wet and once it's rolled. So you need to lay it out fairly squarely and uniformly or as uniformly as you can. Um, but you will always have a few sort of wispy edges here and there. And I would urge you not to worry too much about that. 
I always encourage people never to cut the edges. So it's nice to have a bit of a frilly edge. And I don't think you should worry about it too much. But it's really when you're felting it, when you're rubbing it together, you need to sort of keep sort of squaring it up a little bit just by pulling it. But it comes that comes into its own once you've done your rinsing in the kitchen and then you're rolling it in the bamboo mat. And then you can really square it up and pull it around more or less when it's finished, actually sort of at the point where you're more or less done that is the point at which you can really square it up um, and prevent it from being too lopsided but I would encourage people never to cut it um, so as you can see I'm just adding some real wispy bits here now I'm I'm, I'm I've gone into autopilot so I've sort of done it automatically but what I wanted to show you was just actually, if you go to the overhead, just pulling off really, 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 really fine bits. All right. And then I'm kind of laying them back over each other. So I'm kind of laying some really fine blue bits over the green like this. So it kind of fades from one to the other. And if you just keep doing this a few times, you'll get quite a nice fade going on. Then I'm just going to pull off a few little greeny bits and have those over the blue. I've got my ridiculously large sleeves on again now just to get in the way. I uh, should never wear large sleeves when you're felting or when you're eating soup but you know there we go. Um, so, <laughs> so there we go. So that's kind of the effect I'm after with the blue fading through to the green and then I was just going to add a bit more of a slightly different green. Actually it's made all the more hard by um, the fact that it's further ahead of me than I would normally work with actually while you're on the overhead i'm just going to get up so i can see what i'm doing i'm just going to lay a few little bits of that green up there just to add interest really and then i'm just going to come back with a few more of the sage bits over the top and i'm also now i've stood up i can actually see what i'm doing um i'm just going to add in some bits where it looks a little bit patchy as well like so okay all right, so that's kind of where we're going with that. Now, um, when you get to the point where you're happy with the background, okay, and obviously you can go to town, got loads of colours, you know, you've got, if you want to do wallpaper with yellow daisies on it, you can, you know, and red poppies and the yellow sun and the blue sky and the green grass, all the rest of it. You've got all the colours in here. You've got lots of skin colours, I'll show you here and hair colour so you've got all the sort of neutral colours that you might need okay and then you've got some colours like the red and the pink and the orange um, that could be a hair colour as well um, to do accessories and to do clothing so there's plenty of options in here lots of choice all right so with Betty Boo yes you're, she's just looking at me. Um, obviously, I needed the white and the black, okay? And I started off by looking at my picture. Okay, let me just put it here so you can actually all properly see it. Um, and deciding that, you know, I was just going to start off by laying out the white muzzle. I'm going to put the, the black over the top of it. And then obviously, I need to do the nose, the eyes. Cockapoos and um, well, cocker spaniels actually in general always look a bit sad, and they always look like their mouths are just slightly sloping downwards. So I decided to make hers go up uh, when I was doing it. But yes, obviously the mouth, and then um, the collar, and I have done her scarf as well, and obviously then the pink hat with the blue pom pom. So that's what I'm working from. So. Just translating that onto here, I would start off with the white. Um, again, if you're going the overhead, I might just stand up so I can see what I'm doing. Um, and really, you're painting with the wool now. So the beauty of this, of course, is that you can move it and change it if it's not working for you and if it's not right, okay? So don't worry about doing this. What I would urge you to do is just get the basic shape down onto the background first okay and then I'm just going to do an indication <laughs> Boo's heard a dog barking outside so she's now making a noise if you can hear her in the background an indication of where the body will be and I, what I want to point out here is 
how I'm using the wool. So I'm using the wool very, very fine, okay? Very, very wispy, all right? You don't want to use great big chunks. It's always got to have this wispiness to it where you can kind of see through. And we're going to build up the shapes very gradually from that. So I'm just going to do a little bit more of the white here. So I'm building it up bit by bit rather than putting down great big chunky sections all in one go, all right? Now what I want to do, oh, just drop my, sorry, just drop my black on the floor. Now what I want to do is just take some black, okay, and again, I'm gonna use it really, really wispily, and I'm just going to start putting down an indication of where her ears will be, okay? And obviously she's got this kind of black section across here, across her eyes. So again, I'm going to, work on that as well and all the time I'm just using really 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 wispy bits of, of wool okay and then I'm just going to get an indication of where her other ear will be like so all right and you know people often um, worry about how they're using the wool here I don't tend to get too sort of bogged down in detail I just sort of pull bits off the only thing that you really really must make sure is that it's not too chunky okay and it's nice and wispy because that's what's going to allow it to all attach together when it comes to it a bit later on when we wetting it down with soap and water so now you can see i'm just starting to shape the ears a little bit and i'm just going to try and make them make sure they're rounded at the bottom so what i do do is when i pull off bits of wool is i will kind of do this so if i wanted it to be round well let's do the nose as an example so i will pull this off okay and i will make it into a kind of circle shape like so all right and i'm just going to put an indication of where i want the nose to be now obviously the eyes are here and there's a little bit of an um a little bit of the uh white and gray well she's sort of gray is going up here so i am just going to add a little bit of that going up there the nose is going to sit here and then i'm just going to do a very 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 quick indication of where the eyes will be and again i've just pulled off a tiny 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 bit of white i think mixed with gray in my hand and then i'm just going to pop where the eyes will be because that really helps i think when you add eyes then you can kind of see something coming together a bit more and it, it, it sort of enables you to figure out where everything else should go all the time though keep looking at your picture okay all the time referring back and forth and back and forth and you know if we're looking at the muzzle here i know on instagram you can't see what i'm doing can you which, no. which no that way that way well looking at the muzzle here that's i mean it's it's basically dirt <laughs> She's meant to be white, but you know, um, I, I'll add a little bit of that in and making sure that we've got enough uh, underneath here for the mouth as well. So with the mouth, I'm just going to add literally a tiny bit of wool like this. Now, obviously when you're doing a human, it's slightly different, um, but can you see what I mean about, you know, if we look at the picture, it's quite sort of down, isn't it? And we don't want that. We don't want that, do we? No, we want that. <laughs> so, you know, artistic license and all of that. I'm just going to fill her nose in as well because that needs to be a solid colour-ish, but we do need the nostrils to show. So can you see I've just made a, a circle just by teasing the wool around. I'm just going to make that a bit more profound okay and then if you need to add a highlight for something I'm just taking a little bit and a little bit of black and a little bit of white at the same time I do sometimes just squidge it between my fingers a little bit and then pop it on okay just to give you an indication of where the nose will be like so okay and then working down working the body down obviously you're going to need to fill this in because you don't want to see the blue behind it coming through these fibers so you can see i'm just quickly can everyone see it on instagram or have i gone a bit low probably gone um, a bit low right okay let me not go too low and then i would then add in a little collar so i've just taken a tiny bit of red what you need to make sure is it's, it's not too thick all right and then if you need to break it off just pull it sharply and it will come apart so that can be a collar just very very quickly obviously then if I'm going to do her scarf, she's wearing a little orange bandana, as you can see. So again, just pulling off small wispy pieces of the um, 
of the wool tops okay and just piecing those together just do a rough idea of where you might want it to sit and then obviously it's got a little knot at the side with a bow or a, a, a it's not a bow actually it's a knot with just with two ends of the scarf so you might want to do that so all the time I'm just thinking about how long I want the bits I might twist the end slightly pop that underneath for it to come off and then I might take this color which is a slightly darker orange just to add a little bit of shading so think I mean if you want to if you're if you're into this kind of thing think about where the light's coming from and which bits might be slightly darker you know and then you'll end up with something that looks a little bit more painterly rather than uh, it being very very flat so the other thing you can do is you could take a piece of one color and then a piece of another color in your hand together so I've pulled those off together and then I might just keep it wispy still but you could just twist the ends there and that could be the other end of the tie maybe and actually this has got a little bit of paisley going on on the scarf which I'm not going to do in great detail but I might just take a tiny bit of white a tiny bit of black and maybe just you know do some little details on the scarf obviously if I had more time I'd you know go into that in more detail then with the hat um I'm going to start off with this pink which is included in the kit and again I'm just looking at where the hat sits on her head just so I can get everything roughly in the right place and then we can go back and we can start to make um, adjustments if necessary or add in more detail so with the hat I'm just building it up by taking small pieces off again keep them very very wispy yeah I'm not doing great big um, chunky bits um, she does actually have a bit of a strap coming down here which you can see more on one side the other but I quite like that because I think it looks quite funny <laughs> and then um, I'd use the the blue color here to do a little um, pom-pom so again I've just pulled off a bit of the wool okay and then I'm just teasing it round like so and I'm just going to pop that on top like that Okay, so the, the thing I'm trying to get across to here, let me just sit down a second and talk to you. Um, the thing I'm trying to get across here is that um, you should use the wool very wispily all the time. Okay, so every time you want to create a piece of your picture, don't pull loads off. Just use it very wispily and just try and paint with it. Think about tones and colours. So if you've got another colour that you can use with it that will make it more interesting so it's not just flat blend it with that colour before you put it down. So I was just going to actually just add a little tiny bit of the um, turquoisey colour to the top of the hat there. Now, what's very clever is that I've already done one of these. <laughs> and I'm now going to switch them over and pull down the one that I have spent a little bit more time doing. Oh, don't put it too far, otherwise no one will be able to see it. Can you go to the overhead bit so I can get it in the right place? There we are. There's Betty. All right. So as you can see, I've just spent a little bit more time. And actually, I was a bit of a cheat because I've added in another colour here that isn't in the pack. But, you know, uh, I'm allowed, right? Um, so there's the pom-pom that I was just doing. I've done her hat. I've, I've spent a little bit more time on the eyes here. And I've spent a little bit more time on the muzzle and the nose, just trying to get it... Um, a little bit more like Betty Boo, okay? Um, but I've done everything else in exactly the same way. Oh, and I've just added in a few more little black bits on her coat down here and made her ears the right length. So obviously you can carry on doing this for as long as you like, um, you know, and you can keep um, adding more details to it. But it gets to the point where you probably think, okay, I'm not quite sure what else I can do now. Do you want to come back to me a sec, Chris? Um, and at that point, I would say the, probably the best thing to do is move on to the next step, which is to wet it down. OK, so the next thing you're going to need is some washing up liquid mixed with some lukewarm water. Why are you looking so shocked? Washing up liquid, oh. lukewarm water. <laughs> I thought something had happened then. He was just looking at me like, like he'd literally you... never heard me say that before. How many years have I been making felt for? Um, um, 20? About yeah, anyway. Five years. Um, so a squirt of washing up liquid, 
deter washing up detergent, whatever you want to call it in your country, uh, mixed with lukewarm water. That's your basic felting solution. It's great because it gets right in there. Just don't add more than about a dessert spoonful, well, no, a tablespoonful of washing up liquid, else it will become really, really foamy, okay, and it might get slightly out of hand. <laughs> Okay, so that's the ideal. Then you will also need a bar of soap, which I've covered up with the other Betty. A bar of soap, any old soap, 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 any soap from the supermarket, any soap will do. Uh, doesn't really matter, but it's the alkalinity of the soap that's important. So have that on hand, okay. Then you're going to need the piece of netting, okay, ta-da, that came out of the kit, all right. So if you've never done that this before, let me quickly explain. The netting goes over the fibres once you're happy with them, once you're happy. Then you're going to squash it with soapy water, which is a bit scary because you just spent ages doing that. You don't want it to all ruin, but it might. <laughs> and I'll show you how to rectify it if it does, but I'm sure it won't. So then you're going to squash it with soapy water, you're going to cover it with soap, and then you're going to rub it. You're going to rub it and you're going to rub all those fibres together until they really start to felt. Then you're going to rinse it and then you're going to roll it in a bamboo mat. Now, I don't have time to show you all of that this morning, but I'm going to do my best to try and explain the different bits. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do, if you want to switch cameras, Chris, is pop my netting over the top. OK, you can still see her just through there. And it, your netting should cover you know, pretty much all of the fibres, if possible. OK, so then I'm going to take my soapy water and I'm going to start sprinkling this all over the top. Now, it's a fine line between adding too much and, and not using enough. So I would suggest trying to get it all completely wet. OK, and invariably, I'd say you probably won't be putting enough on. OK, but let's start with that. All right. Now, the next thing that you're going to need that's not included in the kit is just some old dishcloth, which I know everybody has. But that's fine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to push this soapy water through the fibres and try and get all of the air out. Now, this is the scary bit because obviously you've spent ages doing your lovely picture. And this is the point at which you think, oh, my God, it's all just moving in the wrong direction. Although I can still see Betty there. I think the way to avoid it moving around too much is to just, I always keep one hand on it, try and avoid it slipping sideways. And you can see there's still a bit puffy here. It's still got quite a lot of air. And I am just going to add a little bit more of the soapy water on the areas where I feel that there's still quite a lot of air. OK, and then I'm going to carry on and speed up now. If this wasn't live, this would be the bit where it would go into treble speed. Um, I'm just going to speed up and try and get all of the air out of it for you. OK, what you should end up with is something that's as flat as a pancake. OK, so it shouldn't have any air left in it at all and it should feel really, really flat. And then you know that you're kind of there and you've done it, which I think I'm actually... I think I'm there, all right. So there we see Betty Boo, okay, underneath the netting. What you should have now is a situation where you've got this soapiness in it from the washing up liquid. If necessary, you can then put your bar of soap over the top to add even more, but make sure the whole thing is now really, really soapy to the point where you could actually write your name in the soap if necessary okay now what I'm now going to do and this is really important actually that bit at the top is not wet let me just wet that slightly more before I ruin the whole thing what I'm going to do now is I'm very 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 carefully as long as this is soapy this will be fine I'm going to peel the net back and there's Betty all right now Obviously, these fibres have all moved around a little bit and that is always going to happen. But what you're going to do now is to spend a few minutes tidying them back up. OK, so you see, I tend to just use my fingers for this. OK, um, I will just tease things back if they've moved slightly. Do make sure you've got things like eyes in the right place and that they haven't gone walkies because obviously that could make it look really weird um, and then I just want the ties to be looking as if they're ties I want although her ears are fluffy I don't really want them to look 
too out of place okay but what's really moved is this bandana here so I just want to get this back together and also her little lead um, not lead what's it called collar has moved so let's just get that back in the right place and make sure her little smile oh we've got one nostrils moved down <laughs> so that needs sorting out okay and so on all right so these little bits of black here we're just sort of shading i'm just going to move her collar up so i can't see the blue now the other thing that you can do at this point is you can add on more wool or you can take bits away so if you do this and you think oh actually uh it really needs another bit of this here and, and i'm just thinking now actually it does need another little tiny bit of white around her neck because i can see the blue so i'm just going to get a little bit here and I'm just going to pop it on like so. And I'm going to do the same underneath here. And I'm just using tiny bits of wool. Obviously, I'm pressing them down to kind of make it uh, wet so that it all gets amalgamated is the word. Then I really want this nose to be right. So I'm just going to make sure that the nostrils are looking correct and also i feel like the eye has moved a little bit so that's really important too so any questions chris just while i fiddle faddle around with this or are we no not at the moment perfectly oh. everybody understands completely. <laughs> is that right okay well that's very good news and i'm just going to also just make sure my pom-pom hasn't moved too much either and then the top of the bandana just needs to be tidied up a little bit how are we doing for time have i been talking for ages and ages and ages or are we okay uh, we're 36 minutes in. 36 all right okay all right so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to show you how to rub this together and then I'm going to briefly go through the rest of the procedure with you. I mean, the instructions are all in the kit. OK, so um, if you have the kit, then you'll be fine and you'll know exactly what to do. And then they are also in all of my books as well. If you're if you've got one of my books, you especially complete felt making is a good one to get. That's got all the basics in it and will um, take you through all the step by steps. I'm just going to sort that little bit out there as well okay so what we're aiming to do here now is obviously make sure it's still nice and wet which it is and then i'm just going to put my bar of soap over the top again all right like so make sure it's nice and soapy and then i'm going to start to rub okay so when you're rubbing it you need to make sure that you're using both hands plenty of pressure okay so don't tickle it like this because you'll it'll take a lot longer you're doing plenty of pressure the the soap acts like glue so it shouldn't move around the net should be taut over the top so you don't want it if it's if it's looking sort of um i'm trying to replicate it if it's looking sort of rucked up like this that's no good you want it nice and flat over the top okay and then lots of rubbing you're going to rub it for about 10 minutes on this side and 10 minutes on the other side all right by that point it should and i say should depending on the circumstances in which you're doing it um it should be rubbed sufficiently however you need to test it before you rinse it now the way to do that and obviously i have not rubbed this at all the way to do this is to rub it really, really briskly back and forth like this, but without the net, all right? Now, it needs to stay put, and I don't have an example of how that should be because I haven't done it yet, other than showing you one that I've made already. So, you know, when you're rubbing it back and forth like this, it, should, it shouldn't move, okay? None of the fibres should move. They need to be fixed and feel robust okay if they're still swishing and sloshing backwards and forwards side to side uh then you need to rub it for more okay once you've rubbed it for 10 minutes on each side then you're going to take it to the sink and rinse it under some lukewarm water get most of the soap out of it okay and then you're going to bring it back it won't have the netting on it at this point we're going to bring it back and then you're going to roll it up in the bamboo mat which i'm just going to show you really quickly because um, some people don't understand what I mean when, when, when I say they have to roll it in the bamboo mat. So pretend I've rubbed it, okay? Pretend I've rinsed it, 
the netting is not on there anymore and I've rolled it up really tightly in the Bambi mat and then you're rolling it backwards and forwards 20 times backwards and forwards okay and then you do that in each direction okay so what I mean by that is you'll roll it 20 times that way then you'd take it and you would turn it 90 degrees clockwise you'd roll it up again and roll it again okay if you want to see me doing this there's another youtube video that you need to go to about making flat wet felt okay that will take you all the way through it um, with sped up bits so you can see really clearly what to do but you keep turning it 90 degrees clockwise you roll it up again and roll it again for 20 rolls and so on until you've been all the way around four directions north south east and west if you like then you turn it over and you do the same thing on the back north south east west 20 in each direction so you've rolled it 80 times on both sides 160 times in total by that point it should feel really quite felted but then you go back to the sink you rinse it in really warm water then really cool water get all the soap out come back and repeat all the rolling again and then it's done and then it should have shrunk so if you just go to the overhead a sec chris you can see that one that started off the size of Betty, which there's the top of the mat there, and there's the bottom of the mat down there, has shrunk to that, all right? So that's probably, I don't know, shrunk by about 20 to 25% maybe. Um, let me just get another one. Where's the other one gone, the queen? Is she the same size? Now, what you were asking me earlier about the edges, what I do is when I'm rolling it, once I've done a roll, I'll open it up and then I'll just pull it like this to square it up, okay? So all the time, just trying to square it. And you can go all of the, the way around and do this. So if you've got a bit that's a bit curvy, that is normal. But you can just try and just tease it out like that. And then I tease that bit out there. Obviously, this is dry and it's not doing it, but... That's what I would do there. It's it's natural to have it a bit wiggly woggly, all right, a bit wavy here. And you can see there's a bit here sticking out. I mean, you could trim the odd bit off, I suppose, but it's so nice having this lovely finished edge on them. Um, it just makes such a difference. But yeah, if, if it's sticking out a lot, just pull it and tease it like that and it should be fine. OK, so that's it. So once you've done all your rinsing and your rolling then you're done and you can frame it and put it on the wall and be proud or not or make a cushion out of it. Cushion front, nice cushion front, clean on the sofa. Um, maybe I'll do that with Betty. I don't know. But um, any questions is what I wanted to say on this. No. Oh, it's all very quiet this morning. Very quiet. Maybe I've maybe I've explained it so well that you just, you know, I don't know. So that is making felt selfies. I will continue with this and finish it, show you the finished product. Um, I just wanted to tell you about what I'm going to do next week, which is very exciting. I'm very excited about it. So I have started to make, really, make a punch needle cushion, okay? Um, using this book that we sell called Loco Loco, all right, which is um, all about punch needle. We've got three of these books in this series um, and this one is all about making oh I can do this look under the camera ding, ding, ding. cushions um, and wall hangings like these tigers and leopards which are lovely this is the cushion that we're making here okay um, so that's the, the book I'm using our five millimeter punch needle tool okay uh, which um, has different lengths that it sticks out so you can do your stitches different lengths I've transferred the pattern onto our 45 centimetre frame. If you're on Instagram, you can't see me there. Uh, onto our 45 centimetre frame. Okay, so this is the pattern. And I've just started to do the first spot there. But I'm actually going to be continuing this with this this week on Instagram. I'm going to put it onto stories and on story highlights. Okay, and it will be on Facebook as well. But uh, next Saturday, Saturday, we good for, oh gosh, I'm so disorganised. Are we okay for Saturday rather than Sunday next week? I should have asked you this earlier. consult the team. The team. Okay. consult Hurry up. Okay, I'll carry on talking while you do. I'm going to actually do a live tutorial about how to set this all up, how to get going, how to thread the punch needle, how to do the punch needle. And which wool I've been using and so on. I'm going to show you all how to do this next week. So this cushion is made in two halves, as are most cushions. Um, 
So this is just be one side of it, obviously. And then you have the option of doing the other side as well. Or I, I'll see how I get on time wise. I may start that next week. I don't know. I don't know yet. But anyway, I'm going to show you how to do all of that next week. Um, what else haven't I shown you from that? That's the pen I'm, tool I'm using. That's the wool. I think that's it. I think that's all that I'm using next week. So Saturday at 11, is that cool? Well, as it's you, go on. <laughs> so back to Saturday right. next week. And then after that, we're going to take a small break. But we'll see you on Saturday for that at 11. And if you think of any more questions that you want to ask me about the felt selfies, uh, then please do so. And I will type my answers rather than speak them. Oh, and I, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry. It's coughing. <laughs> Choking. Um, Heidi Mac Seven on uh, Instagram said, "Does the kit include everything?" Yes, it it includes everything apart from soap and water and a dishcloth. Okay, so you've got all of the wool that you'll need. You've got the bamboo little bamboo mat and the netting, which are reusable. There's enough wool to make two pictures, two felt selfies, okay? Um, and it comes with the instructions as well. All right, so yes, everything you Liz need. Liz Taylor make. on Facebook mm. says, is there a punch needle kit? Yeah, um, <coughs> yes and no. <laughs> we have had some punch needle kits, but during lockdown they all sold out and I cannot get any more. The manufacturers have sold out and they're coming back in, um, September, I think, or... I wonder if what she means is a kit to do what you're going yeah, to do. Yeah, no, it comes Maybe in separate parts. Um, you do all, it is all bundled together. On the front page of our website, it says punch needle. Next to new, it says punch needle. Click on that, I think it says punch needle, what the fluff is it? Click on that and it's all in that section. So it's like a kit in parts, if you like. Um, the 45 centimetre frame is not expensive but quite worthwhile because it's good having the monk's cloth that's what i didn't mention the monk's cloth is this fabric that you work onto that's quite important and it's good having that taut so it's really good to have it on this frame i would recommend that we sell the drawing pins we sell the monk's cloth you need that and the frame is the monk's cloth the backing for the cushion yes it's the fabric you work onto so this is the fabric that the that the wool gets is. punched through and it's very clever fabric because it like holds the stitches in place all right holds the the yarn in place and that's how it stays put um and then the book is also in that punch needle section and the tool is the five millimeter tool that you need also in that section. The yarn I'm using is, um, we've got this reduced at the moment. It's our West Yorkshire Spinners Aran yarn. Okay, so that's under yarn, West Yorkshire Spinners Aran. It's reduced from 485 to 395 and it's 100% blue face Leicester. Comes in loads of different colors and I'm using wild rose and honey because I didn't much care for the black. So um, I'm going for pink and sort of gold color for my cushion. Um, and that's it. That's all you need for that. Hopefully that's answered that question. So it's not a kit as such, but sort of, because all the things are next to each other. If you've got any questions about what it is you need, just message me and I can help you or email me and I can help you. And I can put it together for you as a bundle, if you like, if you email me. Any more for any more? Christopher? What? Any more questions, darling? About what? Oh, God. Right. So um, one thing I keep forgetting to say every week, because I'm a rubbish YouTuber, <laughs> is um, can you please like and subscribe my channel? Oh, do what? 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 What does that mean? I think it means that you press the like and the press the subscribe button. I don't know, but um, I've been asked to ask you to do that. Um, well, I do know why. I suppose it's good for our channel <laughs> but uh that would be great if you could do that and i shall see you next week at 11 o'clock on saturday thank you bye